Hey, chickens. What are you doing, chickens? Y'all ready for some more corn? Huh? Y'all ready for some more corn? I'm making you some, okay? All right. Y'all should be happy. I told you about the importance of checking for eggs all day long. Boom. And I had seven this morning. There's another one. That's why you check. So, today we're getting into the part two of that deer corn for chickens. And yesterday I pretty much wanted to test it out to see if that stuff would work. And man, that stuff worked far beyond my expectations. So today, we're making bigger batches. And we'll get into that. But, boom! Middle of the day, another egg. How cool is that? Okay, so what I did was, I took, and I added, I normally give them like a cup of that deer corn a day. So it's gonna fluff up, but this is the way I figured it anyway, because it's gonna be more food. So I took seven cups of the deer corn, add it in here, fill it with the water, and I'm gonna cook it, and then I'm gonna store it in my in my bucket, and I'm gonna make sure I keep the corn well the water level above the corn and just dip out some every day and feed it to, to the chickens. That's my storage plan anyway for this, and that way I only have to do this once a week, and I can feed them out of the out of the bucket. Now I've looked at it and, and researched the best I could, and apparently that's perfectly fine. There are some people that actually purposefully ferment the the chicken chicken feed, so this this should be fine over a week's period of time by just dipping out that corn, whereas they'll process the the, the corn better get more nutrients out of the corn versus the dry version that I've been feeding them. So that's what we're going to try. So if any of you got any other ideas on how to actually store the corn once I get it cooked for these chickens for the week, other than the way I'm going to do it with, of course, you know, my the bucket, um, put it in the comments below and let me know. I'd like to hear any ideas you might have. Thanks ahead of time. It smells kind of like a rich, buttery popcorn out here. <laughs> that thing's definitely absorbing a lot of water. <clears throat> so if you're going to do this, just make sure you keep an eye on it because that corn's sopping up that water. And if you left it alone for long, that stuff will probably scorch and burn. But keep an eye on it. So, <coughs> so uh, this morning, which let me back up. We've been kind of worried that uh, <coughs> with the ducks chasing the rabbits, the way things were, maybe they'd hurt each other or something. So we kept watching them close. And uh, this morning when I come to let everybody out, because really the rain hadn't started, and I'm thinking it's going to hold off till tomorrow, so we're going to let the rabbits run out today. So I let the, the rabbits out this morning. <clears throat> and, of course, the first place they went is straight to the ducks. And them and the ducks, we don't think they're attacking each other. We think they're playing with each other. They run around each other and <clears throat> follow each other around. And... We think it's just kind of a big game. So, 
for now, I think we're just going to let them be as they are. They don't want to play chase and run around. That's fine with us. I mean, they ain't hurting each other, so what the heck? You know, uh, <clears throat> last year I decided, when I was a kid, my dad had this muscadine vine. <clears throat> and man, you talk about a vine. That thing was enormous. We used to have a fort up under the the vine. That thing was, it was, it was huge. We had a fort up under the thing. But the thing we did enjoy was during the summer season, <clears throat> you wanted a snack. You didn't have to go inside. You just went and picked a bunch of muscadines off the thing and ate it. You talk about a sugar rush. Woo! But I love those muscadines. So last year, I decided I was going to go ahead and grow me a muscadine vine here, which truthfully, I wish I'd have got a cutting off of my dad's old muscadine vine before that thing got cut down because that thing was great. But went ahead and got me this one. And... <clears throat> I got a good bit of growth out of that thing last year, but from what I understand, it's probably going to take about three to five years to actually start getting any uh, any fruit off of it. <clears throat> so I guess that's going to be a long-term wait and see. I don't know. We'll find out, but I'm hoping it'll come out. <clears throat> Should be fairly decent muscadines. <clears throat> Although my dad had those uh, <clears throat> those kind of uh, yellowy kind of muscadines, not the purpley kind, but. From what I understand, this muscadine mine's got this, uh, or from what I saw, it's got the, the purple grapes. So I'm, I'm not sure what the real difference in the purple and those, uh, those yellow ones like my dad had were, but those yellow ones, they were really good. So I'm kind of hoping those purple ones are going to be at least similar to them, but <clears throat> muscadine vines grow great here in the south, and uh, it should be good. And especially, I think, once it starts actually producing some, uh, some fruit, grandkids will love it. So, uh, well, and my kids too. <laughs> they would too. <clears throat> Let's face it, they're still big kids anyway, but, um, especially Chelsea, she'll probably come out here and slobber down at least a bucket or two when she comes out to pick the muscadines off of it. Who's, who's, who's kidding who? <coughs> but anywho, see, look. I'm telling you, it's a game to them. It's absolutely a game. It's crazy. Hey, chickens, what are y'all doing? This? I'm making y'all some corn this morning. Just hold your horses. I'm making y'all some corn. I will get you some, I promise. How y'all doing this morning? Yeah, I see y'all. You did good on your egg laying. You, you keep it up. You're doing, you're doing a fine job. Doing a fine job, ladies. I appreciate it. So... I think we need to get back to work on cooking their corn for them. They seem to like it. Let's check on this corn and see how it's doing. See if it's plumping up good yet. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah, this is gonna work out much, much better. I like this. All right, well, for the most part, it's looking like it's just about there. I may give it a couple more minutes. Then I'm gonna let it cool down and uh, put it in the bucket for the chickens so uh that was a good thing to try i'm glad i did and it shouldn't take that much work maybe just one uh one batch a week should do me so uh that should work out fairly well yeah it looks like that those rain uh, clouds are starting to head this way now right, there, right over the church yeah they headed this way so I'm hoping to have the animals have a good day today, get some good exercise, because they're probably going to be, well, other than ducks, ducks are crazy. Um, but the chickens and the rabbits, will, they'll be hemmed up in them coops for uh, three or four days. So I'm hoping they'll get their energy out of them today. But we'll see. Alright, it's time to turn this off and just let it sit and soak.
and then poured it in my bucket, and they chicken's ready to go to feed. So, So, we just let it sit and cool off. Okay, you might have an inkling to take the corn you cook and pour the liquid off and put fresh water in it, but don't. They say it's better if you leave that liquid in there and let it soak in that to dump because of the nutrients that that corn is going to reabsorb a lot of the nutrients it may have lost in the cooking back into the corn. So don't dump the liquid off. Leave the liquid in there and let, just when you put it in your bucket, make sure the liquid level is above the level of the corn. That way you won't have uh, bacteria and mildew and fungus and stuff growing on the corn itself. That liquid will keep it from doing that. So it's still a little bit warm. We're gonna let it cool off some more and then we'll get it poured over and we should be good to go. So there you go. Okay, so I got my corn poured. You can see I left the liquid, made sure it was above the level of the corn. That way that bacteria or fungus or mildew or whatever is not gonna form in there. So now we're just gonna close this thing up. Seals good. So, chickens are ready to go. Okay, that's it for my deer corn experiment which turned out much better than what I anticipated. That, uh, that really turned out well. You got any ideas about the deer corn or other stuff we talked about in the video, please leave it in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and share if you can. I uh, hope you enjoyed today's video, and uh, I guess I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Chicken. What are you doing, chicken? Y'all ready for some more corn? Huh? Y'all ready for some more corn? I'm making you some, okay? Alright. Y'all should be happy.